This jointer uses a parallelogram mechanism to raise and lower the infeed table, but in a recent video, John Heiss was suggesting that that parallelogram mechanism added unnecessary complexity. I thought that was quite ironic because my first thought for this jointer design was to use an inclined plane, but thinking about it in detail, I decided it was more trouble than it was worth. So with an inclined plane, you essentially raise and lower the outfeed table like this, but you have to make sure this rests on here exactly flat or the tables won't be in line. And also you have to make sure it doesn't twist like this because that will cause the tables to be skewed with respect to each other. So if you do use an inclined plane, you ideally want this to be at a fairly low slope. One reader who built my jointer actually did use an inclined plane and he used a really low slope. And the advantage of that is if you have a twist on there like that, that has much less effect on twisting the table itself. And also with a fairly long run like this, you're less likely to actually have a twist like this. So if I had used an inclined plane here like this, first of all, my chassis would be kind of broken up a bit. And then if the inclined plane doesn't come out all the way to out here, if I have the table overhanging a little bit, what if I put load on it like this? I don't want this end of the table to come up which means now I need a whole bunch of springs to keep that uh, inclined plane in tension. And I need something to guide it really precise so it doesn't twist like this. And then the whole adjustment crank, because there's going to be a lot of force on it to slide that table up and down, and I don't want it to bind. And thinking about all of these problems, eventually I decided that uh, just having a parallelogram mechanism was really good at solving all these problems. So I'm off a little bit in the middle here by maybe two thou. Okay, let's see how parallel the table moves when I crank it up and down. So I can easily hit any thousandths of an inch that I want to. The meters move in lockstep and there's almost no backlash in the adjustment either. But what if there's something heavy on the table? So I'll just sit on it. And I think those meters might have moved a little bit. It is a wooden machine after all. And now let's adjust this a little bit. And you can see even with my weight on it, they move nicely together. Oh, this is off by a little bit. There is a tiny bit of uh, play against lifting there. Now, next challenge is, what if I drop something heavy on the table? Is that going to throw it out of adjustment? I'm not sure if it's actually this dowel indicator that's moving on me or not. I think that indicator moved. Let's put those together again. It's a cheap one here. This base is not very stable. And zero both of them. And let's try that again. Oh yeah, okay, I need to tighten that down a bit. And set them both the same. And try again. And now pressing down on the end of the table. So you can see that moves a little bit. That's by about a quarter millimeter. Lifting on it. With the way these things jump, I don't know if I can uh, rely on that being the same anymore. I just can't trust this one. Now you might argue, well, I don't hit my infi table with a hammer, 
So I don't need it to be that strong and I don't really need it to be adjustable or not easily adjustable because I almost never adjust it. Well, I've got one piece of wood to demonstrate why that's a bad idea. And that's this one piece of wood which I split and chainsaw milled. It's real heavy and it's real rough. So when you start planing down a really rough surface like that, you don't want to be taking down the high spots one millimeter at a time, so you want to set the cut real deep. But suppose you're uh, surface jointing a wide board, say eight inches or 20 centimeters, taking off one millimeter would already be too much. You'd want to take off less than that to just smooth that surface. So one millimeter is both too little and too much, which is why you need to be able to adjust it and you need that adjustment to be very convenient. And I've put much bigger pieces than this on this jointer. Again, adjustability matters, robustness matters. And by the way, just today I finally added an extra cord on here so I could plug this dust collector into the same switch as the jointer. And this thing only draws about an ampere and a half, so it runs just fine on the same circuit as the jointer. And on the new Heist Wandel project channel that John and I have put together, I've seen a few comments to the effect of with all these YouTubers getting all this equipment thrown at them by sponsors, having all this fancy expensive stuff, it's getting too far removed from the amateur woodworker and it's no fun to watch anymore. And well, I kind of agree with that. But at the same time, I kind of figure if I built the fancy equipment, it's totally fair game.